Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This video is a fun little experiment that I have been wanting to run for ages. If you didn't know, sexual wellness is all of the rage. Sex positivity is now, in certain circles, <laughs> a part of mainstream culture. And one of the things that I've seen happen over the last decade of doing online sex education is this rise in sex positivity and then as a result like sexual wellness brands and companies because you know as soon as something becomes mainstream or palatable then you know all the companies and brands gotta get involved and make some money. That's how it works, folks. One of the many things that has come out of this rise in sex positivity and the sexual wellness industry is sexual wellness apps. And so I wanted to gather some friends of mine, some experts, some content creators in the realm of sex and sexuality and try out some of these apps and see what we actually think of them. So the apps that we're going to be reviewing in this video are Lover, Furly and Coral. The reason I chose these apps are because these are ones that I've heard people talking about, I've seen advertised to me, their PR and stuff have maybe reached out at some point to be like, hey, do you want to promote this app? And I've been like, I don't know. But now we're actually like doing an honest deep dive review into them. But I didn't want it to just be me reviewing these apps. I am but one white cis heterosexual woman. And so I've got my group of testers to help me out. And of course, we are but just five people together. So your experience with these apps may be different to ours. I asked our lovely testers to rate each of the apps in different categories out of five using some different suggestive emojis. So there'll be different categories like accessibility, inclusivity, and content, and then ratings of each of those categories with a certain emoji out of five. With five people, we can't cover all bases in terms of identities, but I hope that we can still give a good breadth of experience with these apps for you to decide if there's something that maybe you wanna try out. So our lovely, lovely testers are sex educator Ruby Rare. You may have seen her featured on this channel and my podcast before. Elena Joy, one of my OG YouTube friends who you will also see on this channel and my podcast. And then we also have some other amazing people who have also been previous guests on my podcast. We have Scotty Unfamous, who is a sex educator and erotic writer, and Kenny Ethan Jones, who is a trans model, writer, content creator, and advocate. So without further ado, let's get into testing some of these sexual wellness apps. Hello, my name is Scotty Unfamous. My name is Kenny Ethan Jones. I'm Ruby Rare. My name is Elena Joy. And I am a writer, trans advocate, public speaker, and consultant. What I'm known for talking about mostly online ranges from periods to mental well-being, body politics, and intimacy. I'm a multi-award-winning erotic fiction author, sex influencer, and sex educator. I'm a sex, dating, and relationships expert. I'm not but I do talk a lot about queer stuff. And I make content mostly about the queer community here on the internet. I am a sex educator, writer, public speaker, silly, sexy, nerdy person. And today we're testing out a few sex and relationship apps. I've downloaded the three apps that we're testing, Lover, Coral, and Fairly. The first app we're gonna talk about today is Lover. Usability and accessibility. So for usability and accessibility for Lover. It's really simple. So generally like makes a lot of sense to use. The way that the courses are set up for you is in like modules that you can follow through. It makes sense. It takes you through the steps one by one. Or if you feel like you don't really need to go over certain things, you can just skip ahead and select whichever ones tickle your fancy. And the navigation bar at the bottom has goals, community, turn-ons, and your profile. I found it quite hard to like change my goal on the Lover app. I kind of felt like I was on just like one track and I couldn't see all of the different things that the app had to offer. I would have liked to be able to access everything. There's captions on all the videos and the overall look of the app is quite calming. The content itself is exclusively audio 
or occasionally there's like audio and video. However, there's no subtitles for the audio. So in terms of accessibility, that definitely goes down a point. One thing I really liked is the community section. I think as a user, that is really nice because it feels super supportive and friendly. And that's a really lovely feature to have. You can see that there's expert answers like from the founder, maybe other experts, but the only ones I can see so far are from the founder, Dr. Brittany Blair. Lover gets four peaches for usability and accessibility. So I think I'm going to go three peaches. I gave it five peaches. Four peaches out of five. Three peaches out of five. Aesthetic. In terms of the aesthetic, this app is definitely designed for women, which not a bad thing, but I guess the kind of aesthetic very much leans into that. And so I think it makes it maybe a bit less accessible for people who are like traditionally really femme women or also, you know, other wonderful gender people. I, shockingly, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic. It just is a bit boring. <laughs> I feel like it's this kind of like curated, trendy, minimalist wellness look, if that makes sense. It's just a very neutral looking thing. I was kind of neither here nor there on the aesthetics of it. It just feels very clinical and sanitized. Like the videos of the founder introducing it and like talking about stuff are so well produced, but for some reason it just feels out of place. I'm not personally connecting to it. It feels kind of like a mindfulness meditation app to me, which is fine, but it's not like super sexy, which is maybe what they're going for because it's more educational than it is sexy. But like, I'm like looking for sexy <laughs> in my sex apps. I'm gonna give it a three out of five eggplants for aesthetic. Four eggplants for aesthetic. Three eggplants. Two aubergines out of five. Two aubergines, maybe three. No, I'll go two. I'll be like Simon Cowharsh on this one. Inclusivity. For inclusivity, I wasn't very impressed by this. It didn't feel like it was super made for me. Do not rate this app for inclusivity. I was listening to a couple of the sections, like the oral sex ones, and it was very much like for him, for her. Guys love blowjobs. And it's like you and your man and that kind of wording just gives me the ick. And it's very much like cis women as the default for this app. When you first start the app, you take a quiz, which is what you do with most of these apps, so that it can tailor the experience to you and ask you about your gender, who you're attracted to, your relationship status, and what it is that you want from the app. So I feel like that's all quite good. It also had mention of like asexuality, which I thought was great. There wasn't any information in terms of like queer, trans, non-binary people that I could see on there. You know, that's okay if like that's not the audience for this, but I guess if the aim for these apps is to be inclusive to lots of people, as I think they should be, it was a shame to not see that. After inputting my preference as a woman interested in women, the course has updated to focus on like vulvas, but I don't think that the app is super trans inclusive because they just ask me whether I'm female, male, or non-binary. They don't ask if I'm trans. And so me saying that I'm a woman attracted to women, they've immediately assumed that that means that I have a vulva and my partner is gonna have a vulva, which is not necessarily what that means. It was all very cis normative language, very gendered, rather than it being like about the body parts. It was just assuming gender across the board. The language didn't feel very like queer or trans inclusive. They didn't really have any mention of disability and there was no representation of larger bodies, you know, fat bodies, which I think is important to include because fat people also have sex. But they did have loads of different cultures and races, which was great. So I'm gonna give Lover a two water splashes out of five for inclusivity. 3.5. Five. What is it, squat? What is this emoji? Is it sweat ejaculation? The, the water? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna give it 3.5. I don't wanna say ejaculation every single time that I'm talking about this. So they get four sweats for inclusivity. Two out of five, maybe one out of five. Inclusivity, they did okay, 
but I don't know that it would necessarily be inclusive for trans people and I can't speak for BIPOC folks. Content. I think the content quality is really high on this. Like I really like the information that they're putting out. The content is just up there. It's, it's one of the best that I've seen. I thought that there was such a wide berth of things that they were teaching you from like quick tips to guided sessions to meditation. I love that when it was content that was a bit spicier that it let you know like, hey, you might want to put your headphones on for this. Like I thought that that was very thoughtful. Do you know what else I really thought was brilliant? The section about the sample turn-ons. Oh my God. Lover also has a turn-ons section, which I'm curious about. Last night, Dan and I played around with the like, couples turn-on swipey thing on Lover. You can invite your partner and figure out which things you both want to try. We had some fun with it, but ultimately got bored after a few minutes. Oh my, this is the first sample turn-on. I think I was just saying no to most of the things. Most of it was to do with like, either specific sex acts or kind of like veering into kink and BDSM. And I wish that there was more stuff in there that was more about like your dynamic and the vibes and how you want to feel during sex rather than like what you want to do. So I was doing the questionnaire, going through the different questions, and I just started to recognise a pattern in things that I liked and didn't like. Like, you know, I'd be like, oh, well, I like this being done to me, but I don't like doing it to others. And I never really thought about it like that. I used to generalise it a lot and just go, oh, well, I just don't like it. Really cracking down on that and again, teaching me something about myself. Yeah, I loved it. I think everybody should be doing that. I think one of the things that I really loved about the content was that they spoke about cultural customs and that isn't something that I often see in programs like this. I love that they had like a whole section on shame. That's one of like the main things that can stop people from exploring their sexuality. All their work around that was brilliant. You can only really do one course at a time. Like yes, you can switch between them, but it's not that easy to switch between them. It's maybe like intentionally designed, but I like dipping into lots of different things. So I would have loved to be able to do that rather than having like one goal. It kind of feels like a course, which can be wonderful if that's the road that you want to go down. Beyond that, you have access to a forum a game with your partner. But I do feel like as well, there could be a little bit more content in there. I think there's some good stuff there. I'm just not a fan of how it's presented and it also just feels like there's not a lot there. So content, I think I'm gonna go three chilies. I'm gonna give Lover a five out of five on content. Content was five out of five. Like I, I loved it. I was eating it up. Four chilies when it comes to content. Two chilies. Price. So in terms of price, if you want the free trial, they offer you a three day free trial. Other apps do offer more days. You get a three months free trial. So that is like way better than a seven day free trial. You've got a lot more time to like really dive into the app and get to know it and figure stuff out. So they don't actually sell it in like a monthly subscription. You buy it in like a bundle. So for three months, you pay £56.99. It then costs £49.99 every three months. Ooh, $76 for three months is a lot. For one year, you pay £114.99, and for a lifetime subscription, you pay £206.99. I think the price is expensive. I think this is steep. I do feel like it is quite on the expensive side. That is four times more expensive than the other two apps. I don't think it's worth it. I wouldn't pay that. I could see $75 for an annual subscription, but $75 for only three months is high. Would I buy it myself? I think I would purchase the three month one. I can probably get through a lot of it in three months. If you really want to learn everything across the board, I feel like Lover is like a really good all in one. I'm gonna give it one money face out of five. They get a two out of five on price three money faces i'm gonna go one I, th I think it's i think it's really steep i really like the content but i think it's it costs too much overall rating i just really really love the content i think that's the best part of this and as i said it's really easy to navigate everything's really clean very professional and it covers all the bases while i really enjoyed the content i feel like the price is high and it's not super trans inclusive generally i'm just not vibing with it it just doesn't hit the spot for me and so lover gets two hearts out of five so I'm gonna give it four hearts. I'll give them four solid hearts. I'm gonna go three out of five. Three out of five hearts.
Okay, let's move on to fairly. Usability and accessibility. The fact that you could like listen along or read certain things was really cool so that you could like see if it was something that was right for you, but also for people who are maybe hearing impaired, that's really good. The reason I thought you could read and listen to everything is because the first two modules there's the option to read or listen, but then after that, it's very much all listen. When will we get an app that does both? It's really based in this kind of core structure. It takes you along this journey. And I think if you're somebody who just wants to arrive to the app and be kind of told what to do, then it's a lot easier than kind of like using the other apps and scanning through and kind of picking and choosing. So I definitely think it's really based on your personality, whether or not you're going to really love this app or find it just that tad a little bit irritating. So you have the home button, which will give you all your modules and then you scroll down and you can see who the experts that they got to weigh in. I am one of the experts. <laughs> I didn't realise that Scotty was there. So <laughs> Scotty, one of our testers, maybe a bit biased towards Fairly, we'll see. Thought that the like vibes of it all was really calming, which is quite nice as a user. The user interface is really, really simple. I find it clear and simple like where stuff is. There's not a lot going on in the app. It's not super busy. The only thing that I will say is that sometimes I find it a little bit harder to scan. I like the simplicity of this app and the layout. So I wanna give it a higher score. Like I wanna give it a four or a five. Out of five peaches, but I don't think that the app has transcripts for a lot of their guided audio practices, which means they lose accessibility points. Four peaches for usability and accessibility. Four peaches out of five. Three peaches out of five. 4.5. Solely because it doesn't have a community page like the other app. Aesthetic. Now, Furley as well is very clean looking. I think it is slick. Like, it's so clean. It's very like trendy. It doesn't offend me. And I quite like the colors in the apps. Aesthetic is very calming, which is nice, but it definitely feels like educational rather than fun and cheeky and sexy, which is always what I'm after a little bit. I think it looks really clean and professional. The kind of wellness app look is suitable for the content that they're serving you. Maybe on the blander side than I would have liked. One thing I don't like is that when I am like listening to my, the main course we're on mindful eating there's just a picture of a woman there and there's no information about who she is we don't need her face there because she's not been introduced to us so they lose a mark for that but generally i'm going to give it four aubergines out of five the aesthetics i'm going to give a 4.5 three aubergines out of five five eggplants for aesthetic four out of five eggplants for aesthetic for me inclusivity in terms of diversity like it was really lovely to see like scotty and almas who are two people that i really really love but also it was very like white lady town which is not necessarily a bad thing but i would like to see a much broader variety of people represented as experts on the app. They included people of colour, which I loved. They included different body types, which I loved. We've got some diversity there in terms of the experts that they're speaking to. That's in terms of race and a little bit of gender identity, but I don't know about things like disability. I didn't like that there weren't any disabled bodies though. It didn't ask me any information about myself to get started in terms of like to curate the experience or whatever to you and your relationship style or sexual orientation or like anything like that. I really appreciate that they use very like gender neutral language, which is super important. I did hear at one point in the course that I was listening to, they said women and folks with vulvas. And I was very happy to hear that, them using that inclusive and accurate language. The app is very much aimed at women and people with vulvas. This app very much feels like it's an app for women made by women. And for that reason, I don't feel like I necessarily connect with it in the same way. But nevertheless, I do think it's wonderful. They don't do much specific chat about queer folks and queer sex. They don't seem to particularly mention anything to do with sexuality. It would be really nice to see some like particular things about gender identity, maybe like something around gender dysphoria. That was lacking a little bit. I get the sense that Furley is less about building a partnered relationship and more about getting in touch with your own mental and physical and sexual well-being. If I downloaded it and I started scanning through the content, I wouldn't necessarily feel seen in it. Maybe that's the purpose. It's so that 
everybody is seen because there is no kind of direct audience that they're speaking to. Information or inclusion, I don't know that it's necessary for the type of modules that they're offering. For inclusivity, I'm going to give fairly a four for that. Three sweats for inclusivity. I think three little squirts. Four water splashes out of five. Content. It takes you through modules based on what your concern is, what's the thing that you want to learn more about, change, improve. And again, they're bite-sized informational pieces. The thing that stands out about Furley is there's more of a focus on non-sexual wellness. So there's more focus on mindfulness practices and cognitive distortions, like mental health pieces as well, not just tied to sex which is a, a pro or a con, depending on what it is you're looking for. So I did Guided Touch, which was a male voice. I actually really liked his voice. It was a very sexy voice. I don't know, I just couldn't get out of my head. I think it was because I wasn't told to take my clothes off. And so I was like chilling out with my clothes on, thinking, oh, we're doing some stuff over the clothes. And then it was just like, put your finger inside yourself. I was like, I'm not even taking my knickers off yet. They had these stories, which I've been going on and on about. <laughs> they also have podcast episodes as well, where they speak to some of the experts. I have an episode on there, if you'd like to listen to me talk. I think it's very well done. It's expert led. They have a lot of experts that I personally look up to as well. And so if you're really looking for information that you can trust, this is the app. The main thing is the guided practice. So the self-guided touch, meditation, and then also like the erotic stories as well. In terms of like information and theory, it's got a whole lot less of that, but it's still like really good, the stuff that it does have. I feel like Furley is grounded in the pleasure aspect. Like that's like their main thing to like make sure that you are having better sex. They only have four different programs, but each of those programs is really well built out. You will learn a lot in each of the programs. It feels like Furley is helping you build the foundation to then build a healthy sex life on top of. The one thing is that it's very educational and coming from a place of the kind of difficulties relating to sex, whether that's vaginismus or trauma, rather than something that's a little bit more like pleasure and joy focused so i'm gonna give it like four out of five four chilies if what you're looking for are those specific topics and a little bit lower maybe a two chili situation if you're looking for something a bit more spicy because this might not be the app for you i am gonna give fairly four chilies out of five i'm giving them four chilies for content i'm gonna give the content four chili peppers out of five i'm going to give fairly a 4.5 price so in terms of price fairly offers you a seven day free trial which i think is wonderful there's a good enough amount of time to fiddle about with it and not have to kind of feel like you have to kind of rush and cram it in fairly does offer you a monthly option it's 11.99 per month 12.99 for a month which i think is too high or they currently have a 72 percent off deal for the year subscription which is 39.99 which is very cheap 39.99 for a year which i think is actually quite a good price i'm currently doing a seven day day free trial and then after that it's £49.99 per year and actually I would pay that and the price was $70 for the year it feels pricey but you could also think of it like for $70 you're getting access to four really solid wellness programs so then it kind of balances out I think this is very fair priced. I wouldn't mind taking this money out of my pocket for this app. The lifetime membership is £299.99. And then £400 for a lifetime membership, which feels like quite a lot, but if you're like really going for it and you know that you're going to get loads of use out of it, then I think that could be a good thing. For me personally, I'm going to give this two little money signs out of five because I don't think I'd pay this much for this app. What is the money sign eyes? Yeah, it gets five of those. I'm also going to give the price four out of five. Four money faces for price. So I'm going to give fairly four out of five. Overall rating. Like I said, it's something that I've spent money on myself. I think it's really good. I really, really, really love the stories. I think that what it does, it does really well. I think it's a wonderful app, especially if you're a woman. There is something about it that is working for me. 
I think maybe because it's so heavily audio and my lifestyle at the moment is very on the go listening to things. If what you're looking for is something that's like very specific and about healing or particular kind of difficulties, challenges that happen and arise in sex, then I would definitely give it much higher. I think this is more for like specific things you wanna learn than general loads of different bases covered. Feels woo woo but it's actually really based in science and trying to like get out of my head and into my body, it hits the mark for me in terms of like, it just, it speaks to where I'm at mentally. I want more spice. I want more flavor. I want more diversity. I want more inclusion. Yeah, I just feel like disabled people are overlooked a lot in this industry. So it would be nice for Ferdy to kind of have that more inclusive angle in that aspect. I think that would be brilliant. Then it would just make it like top of top. Overall rating, Fairly For Me gets four hearts out of five. Five out of five if it's exactly what you're after content wise. If not, three out of five. Four hearts for overall rating. I'm going to give it 4.5. Three hearts out of five for its overall rating. Now it's over to Coral. Usability and accessibility. The Coral units are more text-based. So you're reading through the courses rather than primarily listening or watching. And there are also meditation, some audio lessons and activities. It's a bit busy. Coral does include transcripts of all of their meditations and audio sections, which is great. I kind of wish that there was the option to also listen to like the educational text things because just sitting there on my phone and reading it isn't how I want to kind of consume that kind of information and then also it would like make the information more accessible as well. I really like the design in terms of like the user face and just the boxes like the font and the text is always inside the boxes so my eyes are really like drawn to certain pieces and segments of the app. Finding it kind of confusing and difficult to navigate around the app struggling to like navigate <laughs> parts of the app. I feel like their categories for their content needs to be a bit more streamlined just so it looks a bit less daunting. For me it just made me feel like ah oh, what what do I look at? Where do I go? Either I'm using it wrong or it feels a bit glitchy. Like in one of the units there was just a quiz that like popped up and then based on my answers to it it was just like do you want to find out more about this? So I was like yeah sure take me there and then I'm like but where am I in this course? Like, have I skipped a few sections or am I a completely different journey now? The thing that really frustrated me and I couldn't get to work was that I couldn't just listen to things straight away. I had to schedule it for later and then I'd be able to listen to it. And I'm like, okay, but where's the option if I want to do it now? There's no like, do now button. And instead I'm just like, scrolling up and down and then just like just pressing my phone and then eventually the activity will pop up which was really weird and just felt like a real error in terms of usability and also like if you hit schedule for later it connects to your calendar for some of the exercises you can literally schedule it in to your diary i do not want all of the various different activities and exercises that you can either do solo or with your partner coming up in my calendar. How literal is that for making time for sexual pleasure? I love it. If it wasn't for that, I would have rated it higher, but I'm going to go for two peaches because that is annoying. Two peaches out of five on usability and accessibility. I think I'm only going to give it like two peaches out of five. I will give Coral's usability and accessibility four peaches. Five peaches for usability and accessibility. Aesthetic. I like the aesthetic. Looks kind of just very in with the trends of what like sexual wellness apps and companies look like. It's still trendy, but it's not too much in that kind of sleek curated wellness bag. Pretty colorful. The other two apps were quite simplistic. I'm very happy going all pink a lot of the time, but I really like that this app uses darker colors and like greens, because I think that means it's a bit more inclusive for everyone. I like the tones, I like the colors, but overall it's just too busy. There's a lot happening on each of the screens and like different ways that you can swipe and move and I'm confused. <laughs> it's too much. I feel lost. I'll give it like a good maybe like four aubergines out of five. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. They get four eggplants for aesthetic. 
I'm gonna give it a three eggplants out of five. Four eggplants for aesthetic for coral. Inclusivity. Inclusivity is where coral beat the other apps out. One of the first things that it asked was, have you experienced any sexual trauma? Because obviously your relationship to sex will be different based on that. Which I think is a neat and possibly important thing for an app like this to do. My version of the app is very geared towards like being in a relationship. So I don't know how it would work for people who are either single and dating or people who are polyamorous and whether that would like change things or it like wouldn't work. Like, can you have like multiple accounts? Because when you connect a partner, can you only connect one partner? For inclusivity, I think Coral is better at this than the other two apps right now. However, all of the apps do feel like they have been designed for straight people or like mostly for straight couples. And then there's other things kind of built into that for like people of color and of uh, different backgrounds like there's like a whole section dedicated to that bipoc sexuality and knowledge and that's great so the language that i came across was pretty gender neutral it also had its own section about disability and i think that just made me so happy because everybody else forgot there was also stuff about gender diversity and being non-binary they mentioned trans people from the beginning in terms of like how do you identify i found this really great in their community section conversations about how do I have sex with a trans person? And even a section that I think was from one of their experts saying do's and don'ts, which I find really wonderful because I just feel like that's the education that's really missing. And I think a lot of people potentially struggle with seeing from a trans people because they just don't want to do the wrong thing. So having that advice there is major. So I just hope that like all of the other apps, they're going to develop this more and more and more to make it as inclusive as possible. So inclusivity, I'm going to give it a four water emojis out of five. So it gets five squirts. Three little squirts out of five. Four water splashes out of five. There you go five sweats for inclusivity. Content. I really like the content on this app. They had their own little QR codes for playlists that you could scan and obviously it would connect you to like their Spotify and it would like have different moods for whatever like you were trying to do. There is so, so much to explore. Lots of different stuff, love an audio guide, exercises, games, lots of different like tips and things. There were weekly exercises and they also added content weekly, which is brilliant. They had stories and they had quizzes. I really love the partner aspect, but then I think this is just because I'm in a relationship and when I think about, oh, like this is something that we can do together. I think that's really, really cool. Oh, and then obviously all the other content about disabilities and people of color and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of great and specific information on sex. I was feeling really happy with how much information they've got on there, but it's also really clear to read. I think it could be a good resource for me and my work. So in terms of content, I'm going to give Coral five chilies. I'm going to give it five chilies. I think four chilies for this one. I'm, I'm into it. Personally, I'm really enjoying the content of this Coral app. I think I'm going to give the content three chilies out of five. They get five chilies for content. Price. Out of all of them, it's the most affordable and the fact that it has so much for such a small price is brilliant. I think the price is pretty good, especially if you're looking for an app that has like lots of different bases covered. So you could either pay $5 per month for Coral, which is like really, really low. But 50 quid for a year, like that's less than I pay for my Headspace app, I think. What does that like work out per month? Okay, like four pounds, 16 pence a month. Okay, that's really not a lot. Coral is $80 for the year. I kind of think that's expensive too for what it is. It works out to be about $60 a year, which is a no brainer. Like for what you get content wise, for the amount that you can learn from yourself, I'm buying it. I'm getting it. Would I pay for that? Maybe for like, a month or two. I kind of feel like you could get in, learn all the things you want to learn, try some new stuff and get out. Once I've gotten what I wanted out of it, I would probably cancel. I wouldn't see myself using this for an entire year. And the one time fee was $59.99. You just pay like, 60 quid and boom like you've just got everything so pricing i'm going to give coral five money eyes five money faces for price four monies money faces out of five i'm gonna give price a three out of five 
I think I'd do too many faces out of five. Overall rating. Like, I think it's got a good offering. I'm just not like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever, you know? And I think that like, it could be that for some people, just not me. Coral is my favorite app, I'm not gonna lie. I love it, I'm, I'm gonna use it. That's it now, that's my app. I really like the content in this one. I like the diversity. I like that there's information for partnered exploration as well as solo. I like that there's a mix of educational reading along with like audio activities and worksheets and things you can try with your partner and all that fun stuff. But the app itself is really not intuitive to me to use. Like I'm getting really confused trying to navigate my way through all the sections. Really, really, really wanna give four but it's just the technical glitch that you can't like click and listen to something straight away and you have to schedule it. Cause I think that I just found really frustrating and I couldn't really get into the zone with it. I think it just really stands out to me that it's a very inclusive app when it comes to queer people. Really love the content that's on there. I love the community aspect and it just feels like a little home. My overall rating, I'm gonna give Coral four and a half hearts. For the overall rating, I think I'm giving three hearts. Overall, I would give Coral a four hearts out of five. I think I'm gonna give it three hearts. Overall, I give them a solid five hearts. So now it is time to tally up the scores and figure out the final results. Drum roll, please. But first, I feel like I need to mention that there were some price discrepancies with Lover and Coral between some of us. We were all given different prices. I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't understand, but I feel like I need to acknowledge <laughs> that that happened. Who knows? So usability and accessibility. In third place, we have Coral with 15 out of 25. No surprises there with the glitchiness. <laughs> and then Lover in second with 19 peaches out of 25. And Furley coming up at the top, 21 peaches out of 25. Then for aesthetic, Lover came in third with 14 aubergines out of 25. Also in the comments, I feel like we now need to have a, is it an aubergine or an eggplant? <laughs> aubergine, team aubergine. And then Coral in second with 19 aubergines out of 25. And then Furley coming in at top again with 20 and a half aubergines out of 25. For inclusivity, Lover came in third with 14 and a half squirts <laughs> out of 25. Also, debate in the comments, what is that emoji called? Water droplets, squirt, splash, who knows? Furley came in second with 18 squirts out of 25. And then Coral came in first with 21 squirts out of 25. Okay, content. Furley came in third with 18 and a half chilies out of 25. Lover in second with 19 chilies and then Coral up at the top with 21 chilies. And then Price. Lover came in third with 10 the money uh, emojis <laughs> out of 25. Furley came in second with 19 uh, out of 25. And then Coral came in first with 20 the uh, faces. <laughs> and then for our overall ratings, Lover came in third with 16 hearts out of 25. Furley came in second with 18 and a half hearts out of 25 and Coral came in first with 19 and a half love hearts out of 25. So there you have it. Draw whatever conclusions from that that you will. I had a really fun time testing these apps and thank you so, so much to my fellow testers for joining me on the sexual wellness app journey. There'll be links to them and all of their work in the description if you wanna go and check them out. They're all wonderful human beings. All of these apps also have free trials. This isn't sponsored by any of them, but they will be linked in the description if you also wanna check them out and see for yourself and come to your own conclusions. What ratings would you give these apps? So overall, I would say it looks like Lover was our least favorite as a group. And then Coral and Furley were kind of up there in first and second with Coral just taking the win. If you've tried any of these apps as well, I'd love to know your thoughts on them. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much to my patrons who help support the sex education content that I make here. And if you want to join our little community of sex nerds, the link to my Patreon is in the description. There's lots of behind the scenes content and perks and a community Discord server where we can all chat together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh,